If Utah's hottest markets are a housing bubble, then why haven't they popped yet? Because we have limited inventory and we still have strong demand. Let's just address the elephant in the room, shall we? For the last three years, real estate prices have skyrocketed. They have gone up 50 freaking percent. Now all of a sudden, when they're dropping 10 to 20 percent, everyone thinks the sky is falling. Well, let me tell you right now, if you're a housing crash bro and you're surfing YouTube to try to find latest housing crash data for your stupid blog, then you should literally just not even watch this video right here because you're not going to like anything that I have to say. All real estate markets are really, really local and Park City is a very special market. We are not like the rest of the U.S. We're not like the rest of the country. And in fact, I think some people think that I'm literally insane when I tell you, you must have at least $1 million to afford just a regular house that's 20 to 30 years old, that's not even new, that doesn't have all the latest stuff and all the upgrades. Because when you are buying in Park City, if you understand the real estate here, you are buying here for location and lifestyle. Because the closer you are to the ski hill, the more you are buying beachfront property. So now you understand that Park City is a very different market than the rest of the country. All real estate markets are local. So something could be com happening completely different in Florida. And something could be happening completely different in Austin, Texas, where they're building a lot of homes. And there's more of a price squeezed interest problem there, an interest rate sensitive market, whereas Park City kind of is, but it's not like Salt Lake. Salt Lake is a lot more interest sensitive than Park City is because a lot of these people, there's so much wealth here that they could literally just probably pay cash if they wanted to. The more sophisticated buyer that we're dealing with here in the Park City market and the Wasatch Back, because our real estate prices are way more expensive than the rest of the country. Not everyone is a Fortune 500 CEO and makes seven figures a year. The average household literally needs to make 500K just to be able to afford a median sales price single family home in Park City. So the pool of people that I am actually talking to is very, very small. All real estate markets are local. Park City is like a bubble compared to the rest of the country. And I think you would actually be really surprised that prior to the pandemic, homes actually stayed on the market for like seven months. Like that was typical just because we're so much more expensive than everyone else. We're a vacation market. We're a second home market. And people do relocate here often for jobs or just because they can work from home or work remotely or they're high enough up in a company that they can live here but then also still fly back to their office in LA or New York two or three or four days a week. So with limited inventory and strong demand, the Wasatch Back is outpacing the rest of the country. We're outpacing all of the other markets. We have limited inventory, we have relatively strong demand, and we have scarcity. So our median sales price have actually risen in the last 12 month rolling period. Rise as fast as the pandemic, thank God. But if you're a buyer, you should really be happy. Prices dropped 10 to 20%. They're staying on the market longer. You have more negotiation ability. The only problem that sucks is that yes, interest rates practically doubled. 2022 has literally been the year of punching buyers in the face because prior to the interest rates rising, I believe it was like April or May, I think it was May, January, we only had like 461 listings in all of our MLS. That's like one house for sale. And so homes were still, you were still having to completely overpay for a house and you were competing with 10 other offers back in January. Then all of a sudden interest rates and it's like, bam, you got punched in the face again. You know, if you are a buyer that is interest rate sensitive, then this is probably bad news for you. But if you're not a buyer that's interest rate sensitive, then, and you're continuing to wait for the market to drop, I mean, you can keep waiting, but I'm telling you right now, prices are just going to continue to rise. They're not going to go up probably as fast as they were going up, but you're going to be paying more if you wait till next summer. If you wait till next year, I definitely believe that. It's just going to go up slower. When you are buying into Park City, you are really parking your money into a very, very, very safe and stable and strong market. I think buyers and sellers are finally starting to adjust to the market a little bit, like life has finally gone on. And really, life is now dictating whether you're buying or selling. It's not trying to time the market. Like, okay, like I'm, I'm taking a new job offer. 
okay, we need to sell because this house is too big and I don't want to mow the lawn. Okay. We need to sell because we've outgrown this house. We have a bigger family and we need a bigger house. Your reasons for buying or selling are personal. And that's what dictates your motivation to buy or sell. Not whether it's a 3% rate or a 6% rate. I think people who are house hoppers, which Park City, believe it or not, has a crap ton of house hoppers. Like literally, I feel like people that live here move like 10 times. And, you know, if somebody bought two years ago that has a 3% interest rate and a new house that comes on the market that is better than that house, I don't think they're going to house hop to the new house because they have a 3% interest rate and they're not going to want to change that for 7%. So I think that the market has some different circumstances. And that could probably be why we still have limited inventories because people don't want to sell that have a 3% interest rate. I've also seen an increasing trend of sellers renting their homes out instead of selling them. Like if you have a strong enough desire to buy something here, then do it. And if you need to sell for a specific reason or you have an emergency and you need to sell, yeah, the market wasn't what it was. It's not hot anymore. It's definitely peaked, but you'll, you'll still be able to sell your house. It's just going to take longer. I think people are still worried about inflation, about a recession, about some factors of economics that we're all kind of wondering what's happening. It's still a little bit unpredictable. Could the housing market really be screwed? But what I found is that Utah's unemployment rate is still super low. And we have the most job growth out of all the U.S. states. So that tells us that Utah is a really strong economy and job growth is really strong here. And what do we know about housing? Housing follows the job market. So as long as people still have jobs and are not being laid off, then I feel like the housing market is going to stay relatively stable. I don't know why people want the negative news. I don't know why y'all want a housing bubble or a housing crisis. I don't want one. All right, want to deliver on what you came here for. So this is a rolling 12-month period of what is happening. And I think it'll shock you. The median sales price in the 84060 is $3.9 million. That's up 33%. A condos, 1.5. That's up 20%. Vacant land is 2.1. That's up 45%. Our single family, our single families are down and sold 40%. And our condos are down and sold 29% in this area. But our prices are still going up. This chart gives you an awesome little take on what's going, what's happening. And you can kind of go all the way back from 2018 to 2022. Does it look like we're having a crash? No, prices are still going up and up and up. Same with condominiums. Now let's check out the Snyderville Basin. Median sales price is 2 million, so it's up 5%, so not quite as much. Median condo is a million 49. Median sales price for vacant land is 93500, up 25%. Sold volume is down for single family homes, but it's up for condos. Remember, this is a 1 year rolling average from September 30th um of last year to October 1st of this year, I believe. Jordanelle is actually the only place that we saw um, the median sales price go down 32%. And to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure what that reason is. So you're at 1.7, probably just because it exploded out there so fast with all that new construction. That could be why. Median sales price is 964. Vacant land is 726. So uh, condos and townhomes are still up. Vacant land still up. Uh, the sold volume is actually up. So they sold more, but the median price came down and the vacant land is up 48%. And if we jump over to our beautiful little friends over in the Heber Valley here, median sales price is a million forty two five hundred. It's up 25% from last year. Our median sales price for a condo is 496. It's up 30%. Median sales price for land is 499500 That's up 66%. Sold volume is down 10% for a single family and down 25 Now, if we look out in what's happening in Camas, 
Median sales price, 900,000, that's up 15%. Median sales price for a condo, 600,000, up 20%. So condos are more expensive in Camas. Vacant lands for 12,500, almost up 98%. Um, sold volume up is up 1%. And uh, for vacant land, it's actually down 25%. So with limited inventory and strong demand, the Wasatch Back is outperforming nearly all other markets around our country. Limited inventory and relatively strong demand have caused our median and average sales prices to rise, although not at the rapid pace of pandemic years. The Wasatch Back offers an amazing lifestyle and peace of mind that is in limited supply nationally. Growth in the Snyderville Basin and Jordanelle and Heber Valley has continued to benefit significantly from new construction as our housing footprint expands to areas surrounding Park City proper. Buyers and sellers are adjusting to the tempering of our market and balancing mixed economic signals of inflation, recession, of inflation, recession, interest rates, continuing continuation of remote work environments, full employment, and all-time highs of household wealth. We see no signs of a new housing bubble emergency, but rather a return to historic norms. So still very positive for the Wasatch Back. On a specific neighborhood area, please always reach out to me. My information is dropped down in the description link down below.